All right, guys, welcome back to another Itch.io free-to-play game, and this will be our fourth entry for Game of the Week, which will end on the 29th. Everybody has enough time to vote if they would like to. If you want to vote, you'll see a poll in the top right. Click it and click the game name. And whichever one wins, we will give them a five-buck donation, because that's all I can do at the moment. But, Isotope Project, let's do this. I don't really know much about it. It looks kind of like a visual novel to me. Hey, you there. You consider yourself a good person. I'm a wonderful person. Yes. So you think you're a good person, huh? Who do you put first then? Your family or your friends? My friends are my family. I see. You are very interesting. But where do you draw the line between strangers? Would you risk your life for someone you've never met before? Depends on the situation. The time is now. You hesitate, there will be consequences. All right, let's get our fingers ready. Where's the save button? Save. Uh, I know how these games work. Do not fail. All right. I only have a few minutes until the surveillance camera switch back to this aisle. Let's make this quick. What? I'm not still nothing, dog. Iris pauses in front of the aisle before retracting her hand from the food. However, she still stuffs a boost. A few assorted groceries into her arms and makes you before making her way to the checkout. I'm not selling anything. Oh, Iris! Hey, David, what's up? Iris places the groceries in her arms onto the counter, smiling thinly at the young shopkeeper. Nothing much. You're like the third customer today. That's basically a new record. New record! David begins scanning the objects on the counter before looking over and noticing Iris's plastic bag. What's that? Oh, this? Iris holds up the plastic bag. It's just an empty bag I took back after practice today. Oh, that's right. How is practice? Er, well... To be honest, I haven't actually been, like, playing. I've just been spectating. Still on leave because of the accident. Oh, shit. That's right, sorry, I forgot. How have you and your brother been since then? <laughs> Damien barely remembers the incident, thank you, thankfully. His injuries were the least serious. He's been give, going to score normally and supposedly getting high grades. Oh, that's good, and you? I've been fine too, thanks. Just taking a break from softball, really. I wish my coach would allow me to join sooner since we have a big game coming up. Oh well. In another week I should be well enough to compete though, so it's not all that bad. Hopefully my parents will be out of the hospital soon enough for the game. Your parents are still in the hospital? Yeah, their injuries were the worst. Anyways, how much is this all together? Oh, oops, sorry to hold you up. It's 11.50. Uh, David, are you sure that's right? Shouldn't it be closer to 20? Hold on, what's the big idea? Did you just slip a few extra fruit in here for free? Hey, hey, lower your voice. My old man's going to hear you in the back if you make a big, huge deal. Sir, a gift for me, okay? I know you've been going through some rough times while your parents were out. And besides, you come here all the time. <laughs> I'm about to change his voice more than anyone else, or uh, at least. Are you sure? Didn't you say that the store had already had been shoplifted already? See, that's why we didn't shoplift. Look at that, kids. I'm a good influence. Yeah, it's been going on for about six months now, actually. We installed a ton of new cameras and equipment a while back. Uh, yeah, I remember you pointed them out to me. It's been mostly food, so we have tighter security in the food aisles now. I bet we'll catch them soon. I hope so too. Here's twelve dollars. You can keep the change this time. Aw, uh, thanks. You and your brother rest up, okay? Yeah, see you tomorrow. This is the first day in six months I haven't stole from them, huh? Our sighs and looks up at the sky as she leaves the store and heads towards her apartment. I gotta get home before da Damien gets back from school. The teenage girl hobbles up the hill and into a small, dingy apartment building. As she enters the building, 
It begins to rain. It begins to rain. I hate the rain. Iris sets down a bag of food on the kitchen table before collapsing into a chair. She serves to glance on at the clock on the wall, I've framed by a few rare photographs of her family members. Oh shit, is it seven already? Damien should be home soon. Iris turns around in her chair, scooting to the side so that her brother can navigate past her in the room. <laughs> Welcome home. I'm home. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? <laughs> I don't know how to do a kid voice. Please tell me you made dinner. I may not have had time yet. Ugh! But Iris's little brother tosses his bag into a chair and slouches into another with extreme theatric flair. Do we have anything that we can at least microwave for dinner? Hmm, I don't know. You even know what we have in the kitchen right now. Give me a sec. Iris rubbages through the grocery bag and gently places a fruit inside their empty fridge. You know. Hmm? What happened? I got 100 on that test I took last week. Good job! Dude, nice. Was this your science or math class? It was my art class. Math class. Math class, obviously. And get this. Get this! I was the only one in the class to get 100 too. Oh, I'm so proud of you, bro. I didn't really get much aside from the fruit to the store today. Tell me did good. Why are you ignoring him? Oh man, do we have any macaroni and cheese left? I think we have one cup left in the cupboard for sure. Fuck yeah, don't you be cussing. Hey. But it's mac and cheese. <laughs> I feel it. Even if it's all of mac and cheese. Dinner will be di dinner will be done microwaving in about a few minutes. Okay, good. I have a lot of homework today, so can I eat my room? Yeah, it's almost finals week, sis. Yeah, you have to do this just for now, okay? I promise I'm just supposed to keep watch while Cocoa Coco does her thing. Yeah, yeah, I know, but, I mean, like, after this one, I'm going to look for a job too, okay? Huh? You think I can? I could probably pass for a 16-year-old, even if it's just bagging things at a grocery store or something. I bet I could help. Alright, but I have to approve of it. Sweet. Now I just have to look up super rich jobs. <laughs> I doubt they give jobs like that to 16-year-olds. Really? Fuck. <laughs> got to catch these hands on. Uh, come on, sis. Can't boss me around forever. Yes, I can. I'm older than you. That's what you think. Here's your Mac. Hold it by the eight edges on the bottom where you're burn, burn your fingers. Woo! Dinner time. All right, I'm going to do homework. Mother fu fudger! My hand! What did I tell you? Be more careful. Well, whatever. Shit! That hurt! I'll be in my room doing homework, okay? Okay, okay. If you spill, I'm not helping you. Damien shoots his sister a sneer, but she merely rolls her eyes. Damien retreats into his room with his book bag. You thought you could live with without me. Good lord, it's a wonder you didn't spill macaroni everywhere. Now, if only it would stop raining. I haven't even had dinner for myself yet. David said the store has been constantly robbed for six months. That's a long time. That means mom and dad have been in the hospital for a little over half a year. Uncle Nick said we could visit them again soon, though. So they must be getting better. It's almost time for Cocoa to set up. Where is she? Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Iris flinches away from the knocking on the door, but a young woman enters from the hallway with a big grin on her face, ignoring Iris's chagrin. Chagrin. The green. Oh good, you're here. Normally you should knock and wait for me to open the door, you know. Of course I'm here! You're supposed to be my stream partner tonight, right? I don't want you to be nervous and chicken out. A lot of people chicken out. 
I can imagine. The last person you streamed with was crying hot sauce out of his nose. Yes, but are you sure you want to do this? I know I said I was short-handed on gas, but I don't want to get on, on camera. But if you don't want to get on camera, I can't keep stealing food forever, and if I don't like it, you'll let me edit for you, right? Some, somebody's got to pay the bills. Help me all. Well, it's just a gameplay stream tonight, right? No. Yeah, just some Mario Party. You said your uncle doesn't get home until late tonight, right? We can stop before then. Thanks. He's got to... He goes to sleep right after, so I feel bad keeping him up. Of course! This apartment's a bit too small for three people. Now that I see it in person, you can move to wherever you you were living with your parents. This is where I live with my parents. Oh wow, it's tiny as heck. Wow, you're kind of a jerk. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. It's just me and Damien here right now anyways. I get to sleep in my parents' room. Oh, I can't imagine sharing a room with my sister. Are you sure you'll be able to handle this? Hmm, what do you mean? You're not exactly high energy or anything. Are you sure you want to play? Well, you're the one saying we never hang out anymore. I'm so close to getting the viewership I want, I can't just cancel streams anymore. Not trying to blame you. It's just hard to find time between school and hanging out with my family. I don't need to worry about my family anymore. Why? Ah, I see. Ooh, it's almost time. I should set up. I'm using your bedroom, right? Yeah, definitely. Not, not Damien's. It's finals. Hey, I really appreciate you letting me use your bedroom internet to stream tonight while I'm working things out with my mom. I don't think she'll find out where I am, but it could get scary. Are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure. It's fine. Yeah, I'm sure. I promised we could hang out and you could stream here as soon as shit went down. Cool. Thanks, Iris. I'll get my equipment from my car. I even brought some weed we can smoke to chill out before stream, but I'll be right back. We're not smoking weed. <laughs> Coco hugs Iris and leaves, closing the bedroom door promptly behind her. Hmm. I guess I should be thankful that this room was built to be soundproof. Coco must be crazy loud when she streams for her mom to kick her out. Can't be much louder than Coach Bartley when I miss a swing, right? I hope so. Oh, Coco, come in. It's not Coco. I didn't even hear her come back into the apartment. Weird. Whoa, David! Huh? David? Oh my god, Iris, are you kidding me? D David, what are you doing here? I didn't believe it when my dad said he caught you on this video surveillance stealing from us yesterday. I came to ask you about it, but I could see from the tons of cans from our store that I do not remember selling you. Have you seriously been stealing from us for the past six months? Oh, my life sucks. I... I just... So he was right. You don't even have to say anything. I can tell by the look on your face. But maybe there's some mistake. Six months? Six months, Iris? I've been giving you discounts and free food ever since the accident, too. And you still stole from me? Dad says you took about $2,000 worth of food. I... I can't pay you back right now, but... I just... Iris, man, I thought we were friends. You literally could have just asked. Or asked for more. What the fuck happened to you? This is getting... Really heavy. <laughs> I didn't steal anything. The teenager advances towards Iris. Isis. What did her name name change? His back facing the do front door. Iris is breathing quickens as she looks around wildly for an escape route. I I. Uh oh. Iris' vision blurs as she falls backward, cracking the back of her head against the corner of the table. Iris. Oh shit, she's dead. Iris. Just this once, I will assist. 
Do not fail me again. What? What? I'm so confused. Wait a second. Do not fail, it said. I'm still not stealing anything. What made me fail? The only two choices I had was stealing something and then letting Coco stay. Should I not let Coco stay? Alright, Coco, you can't stay no more. I guess. That's what I get. That's what I get. We're trying to be nice. I'll be honest, things are a mess right now, and I'm kind of, I think I'm kind of a mess too. I'd rather have you around than be alone. I see, I respect that. If it makes you feel any better, remember that it's just one night. I'll think my mom will cool off by tomorrow. I still have some time. You want me to hang out with your brother a bit? So you can clean up your room first? Yeah, thanks. Coco leaves, walking into Damien's room right next door. What, what the heck are you doing in my room? Chill out. It's just for a little bit, okay? <laughs> Listening to them bicker is a little silly. I'm so nervous. Oh, come in. Crap! Huh? David? Am I gonna die again? Oh, wait. Go back. I missed something. Crap! Oh, piss! I keep my- Okay, reload. No, I want to reload? Okay, so it changed. Yes. Okay. Alright, here we go. Oh, come in! Huh? David? Oh my god, Iris, are you kidding me? D David, what are you doing here? I didn't believe it when my dad said he caught you on video surveillance stealing from us yesterday. I came to ask about it, but I could see from tons of cans from our store that I do not remember selling you. Have you seriously been stealing from us for the past six months? I... I just... So he was right. You don't even have to say anything. I can tell by the look on your face. Well, maybe there's some kind of mistake. Six months, Iris? Six months? I've been giving you discounts for free food ever since the accident, too, and you stole from me? Dad says you stole about $2,000 worth of food. I, I can't pay you back right now, but... I just... Iris, man, I thought you were your friends. You literally could have asked for anything and, or asked for more. What the fuck happened to you? Shopkeeper advances towards Iris, his back facing the front door. Iris breathing quickens as she looks around for wildly for escape route. No way. That's right, Cocoa. Save. Coco, Coco, hey. Who the heck is Kokoa? Look, I know you've been through major shit, but honestly, I had to tell the police about this. They should be on their way right now. Fuck, are you serious? But Coco, they'll bust her too. Bust her too? Ars, are you doing something shady nowadays? Shit, 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 what do I do? Oh crap, these choices suck.
Try to reason with David. Look, look, David, I know what I did was wrong, but you you don't understand. I had to. Iris backs away slowly into the bedroom, trying to draw David out of the kitchen so Damien won't overhear them. Had to? You had to still? All you had to do was tell me you had problems. We could have hired you so you could afford food or something. The shopkeeper angrily holds, grabs a hold of Iris's shoulder and shakes her violently. But the shaky baby syndrome, no! I just, I don't understand. Ah, uh, uh, David, shit, you're hurting me. David shoves Iris hard against the window and then, oh, fuck. That's too scared. God damn it, just scared me. <laughs> fuck. Did he just shove me through the window? Fuck. Fuck. Now my head's going to smash into the pavement. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to die, aren't I? Nope, we're alive. Ah, oh, shit, my head. God damn, my head hurts. Uh, miss, are you, miss, are you okay? Ah. Oh, it's a dude. No, wait, don't get up yet. Mm, holy shit. By Iris' bewildered state, she has enough sense to quickly scoot away from the stranger. Ah, don't be afraid, miss. You've injured yourself. That was some nasty fall. How's your arm? My arm? What's wrong with my arm? Shit, my head hurts, and I feel dizzy too. What's going on? I can't, it's hard to even focus my eyes. My arm looks normal to me. There doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it in particular, except... Huh? I can't move it? Look at your shoulder. I think you've dislocated your arm. Shit. Millie, our left shoulder was significantly lower than her right. She couldn't feel any pain, but the discomfort was starting to creep up on her. It's all right. I could pop it back in. The red-headed haired youth squats behind, beside Iris, but she essentially places a foot in between them in case she has to kick him away. Miss Rudax, I am here to help you. Believe it or not, I've dislocated my arm a couple times. Have you, uh, done this before? Once or twice. All right, and... Ow! Although it hurt for a moment, there was a rush of blood back to Iris's arm, and she could actively move her fingers again. The red-haired boy moved her away from Iris, clearly pleased with himself. Oh, hey, I can move it. Thanks. No problem. Hey, what's with the hoodie? I, uh... I don't think I've ever seen you around the forest before. Hoodie? Iris finally looks down at herself and notices her blue attire for the first time. Her head is starting to clear, but it still looks... takes her a while to process what is going on. As she squints down at her outfit, something else catches her eye and the reflection of the water gushing between her shoes. Huh? M my eyes are green? What the heck is going on? This... Now I'm least close her mind except for my tank top. Hell, I didn't even put my on shoes when I... Our eyes widened as she suddenly recalled what had happened to her earlier. She looked straight up at the pleasantly blue sky, her mouth hanging open. And David, well, wait, wait, the cops are coming. I have to, I have to tell Cocoa. Hold on, hold on, Missy. Maybe you did more than just locate your arm when you fell. Did you bump your head too? Fell, but this is nowhere near my apartment. Apartment? You're from the city. Which one? Ah, New York. It's really important that I get back as soon as possible, no matter how I got here. Ah. I've never heard of this city. Is it anywhere near Platinum? Okay, I've never heard of that city either. Is... is this what they call it, Amnesia? You at least remember your name, right? I remember my name is Iris, and I got shoved out a window. There aren't any windows around here, though. Iris awkwardly twirls off as she looks up at the sky in bewilderment, once again trying to process what happened. Iris, what a strange name. My name is Reese, by the way. Reese the Dragonfly. 
Iris' attention is diverted from the sky as she notices that there are huge trees on either side of the river that she landed in. It's a wonder if she didn't smash her head against the rocky riverbed. There's definitely so nothing like this near my apartment. I did fall out of a window, didn't I? Or maybe this is just a dream. Hmm. Well, if it'll help you jog your memory, I was making my way back home from town. From the next town when I saw you plummet for out of the sky. I dashed on over. But even my wings weren't fast enough to catch you. Sorry about that. Wings? Oh shit. Iris takes a closer look at the man in front of her, finally noticing the set of four translucent pink wings attached to his back. As the wings fluttered in the breeze, Iris began to question whether her imagination was even capable of producing something like this. Hmm? What's wrong? You've never seen dragonfly wings before? You're joking, right? Those are real wings sprouting out of your back? There's no way I'm dreaming. Everything feels too real. Maybe I'm just dead. Damn, that fall must have killed me. Is this heaven? No, no, you're not dead. I think. And I don't think I would call this place heaven. But anyways, of course my wings are real. I'm an adult now, after all. But how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 17. 17, and you're still wearing a hoodie? Were <laughs> you trying to fly before your wings matured or something? I don't have any wings. I'm already fully grown. Fully grown, but without your animal characteristics. And you're supposed to be an owl, too. Owls are lucky. Really lucky. You know, the god of color, blue, is just an owl, just like you. I'm, sup I'm supposed to be an owl? Alright. I know I'm pretty confused right now, but I'm... Really sure I'm not now. I'm a human. Anyways, thanks for helping me with my arm, but I should get going. I have to get back home. Did you just say you're a human? Huh? Well, I've always been a human. I don't see what why that would change now. A human. Hmm, a human. But that's impossible. Earth's portal was closed to the color decades ago. Earth? Now that's something I actually recognize. Yeah, I'm from, from Earth. How is that possible? Only a god could. Oh no, wait a second. Your owl hoodie has the royal colors of blue. Uh, it does? You. Yeah. You're a human synchronized with one of the gods of color? God of... No, this is just a hoodie, isn't it? I mean, I don't know why I'm wearing it, but... You said that you came from Earth, right? What was the last thing that you remember on Earth? Well, I was jumping out of a window and fell. I closed my eyes because I thought I was going to die, and then there was a flash of white like lightning through the rain. If you truly are human synchronizer blue, you're not safe here. Not safe? Why not? Let's just say, humans aren't exactly welcome here right now. I probably shouldn't even be doing this, but as a medic in training, it would be dishonorable to leave a patient behind. We should at least move into the safety of the forest. Can you walk? Um, yeah, my legs are fine. I guess even if this is a dream, I want to stay, as lo stay alive as long as I can. Can you fly? I told you before, I'm a human. Humans can can't naturally fly. Perhaps you can't fly, but blue can. Uh, okay, Where and where is this blue? Do I have to summon him or something? I'm not sure how the gods will operate with the humans. I guess if you can't fly, I'll have to carry you. Carry me? I can walk. Not to my forest village. You need to be able to fly or climb high trees to reach it. Alright, hug me. I'm sorry, what? I won't drop you, I promise. You're going to... Oh, I see. Iris awkwardly wades through the shallow water sorceries, climbing onto his back. Wow, this is weird. He's a lot taller than I thought he was. Good enough. All right. Ready, steady, go. Ah!
Whoa. This is incredible. I've never been so high up. Now, don't worry about falling off. I'll catch you. Let me save. Looks dangerous. I won't fall off. That's a long way down. Admittedly, riding on the back of a dragonfly boy is probably the coolest stream I've had in a long time, but... This feels too real. We'll reach my village in a few minutes, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks for taking me there. The air is so clean here, and everything is so quiet. No matter how far I look, I can see nothing but tall trees for miles. Pretty obvious my apartment isn't anywhere around here. So am I dead or am I dreaming? Now that I think about it, he said my clothes are related to a god or something, right? What he says is true. I wonder if I should really trust him. Maybe he's taking me back to his house to eat me. You said your name was Rhys Iris, right? Hmm. Oh, yeah. And your name is Rhys. Ah, do you remember my name? Oh, well, yeah. Kind of. Rhys the Dragonfly, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm so flattered. I thought you were dead listening to me. I admit it, I totally zoned out. That was just a guess. As for your situation, perhaps this is the workings of Lou. Or maybe I'm like having an Alice in Wonderland dream. Who is this, uh, Alice? Er, nothing. Blue, huh? That's Al God or whatever? Yes, on our planet, Blue is one of our three gods. Hmm, so they must really believe in gods here. Perhaps it's more accurate to say that gods exist here. Assuming this is all real. You knew about Earth, but I've never heard of... Ah, our planet is called Kalu. It's understandable if you don't know. Blue abandoned Earth quite a few centuries ago. I'm not even going to question why an owl god was visiting Earth. Actually, Blue made Earth, if I remember correctly. I better be dreaming. Ah, are we here? I'll explain everything in a minute. But for now, let's just get you under some cover. Chris ducks down gently towards a wooden platform nestled between two trees. Although Iris' stomach drops at the dip, she holds back from screaming. Here we are. Home sweet home. Even though it's getting kind of dark, this place looks incredible. Are these all tree houses? It looks as if there are 10 to 20 tree houses, one or two in each tree. Remarkably, the pair appear to be several hundred feet off the ground. No wonder you said you can, I couldn't walk up here. Everyone here can fly, right? Yeah. We build bridges to our nearest neighbors for the, for the children and the elderly. Who are just confident in their flying. Ah, that's right. In this world, children can't develop uh, animal characteristics until they matured, right? Right again. I think humans go through a similar phase. Puberty? Yeah, I remember that. And kids wear hoodies? Hmm. Yeah, they do. Now that I think about it, I wonder why Blue has bestowed you a hoodie on you. Hmm, her majesty was never given one. You have a queen? Yeah, she's a human like you, but she's been here for, well, let me think. About 14 years now? She, she's been here that long? I'm going to be here for more, no, I'm going to be here for more than 13, 14 years? Well, I'm not sure. Her Majesty came to color one day and just never left. Yes! A shrill voice cuts through the force and natural quiet. The pair turn towards the source. It looks like a young girl is bounding over to them from across a bridge. Oh, Lisa. Welcome back, Riss. Up close, it appears that Risa has also has a set of wings. Hers are shaped and patterned quite differently from Risa's, though. Huh? And you bought a friend? Yeah, I picked her up on my way back from the city. Actually, the details are still a little fuzzy, and it's kind of important that we get this sorted out immediately. 
What does this mean? I'll tell you later. Let's hurry home so we can talk about this in private, okay? Alright, alright. This must be really big. The three all filled into the nearest hut, which was apparently Rissa's and Reese's house. It was a little hard to see now that the sun had set. But they all gathered around a small table not too far from the entrance. So, what's going on? Iris, this is my little sister, Risa. Risa, this is Iris. I found Iris on the riverbed, close to our village, about half an hour away. And I think she's a human chosen by Blue. What? Are you serious? You're... you're a... chosen child? I don't know if I'm chosen, but I know I'm a human. Unbelievable, where's your proof? You look like an ordinary owl girl to me, if not just a late bloomer. I, I'm not sure how to prove my human, humanity, to be honest. What is something a human could do that you guys can't? Well, not much, actually. We can do more than what humans can. Humans are supposed to have bigger brains, but that's hard to test in our case. Were you burn, born here? No, I was born on Earth. I fell out of a window and ended up here. Oh, crap. Is there a bag? I think I missed it. Crap. Oh, well. It says something, something, that, something, something. Well, I admit, it's just a hunch. Need a back key. And you're nothing but a phony. A true human chosen by a god would be able to wield god's powers. Blue is a god of weapons, but you don't have a single weapon on you, do you? That should be proof enough, but you're just an overgrown fledgling, not a human. Hey, I'm not making this up. I promise you I was born on Earth. I'm not going to grow wings and become some kind of owl. I don't even have wings. Oh yeah? You don't even have wing bones at your age? You're clearly developed enough to have some kind of mutant trait at this point, so turn around! Iris turns around, lifting up the back of her hoodie and tank top to show her the pair her spine. The two winged siblings stare at Iris back cautiously for a few minutes and then sigh as Iris rolls her shirt back down. This really is unbelievable. It's completely pure humanoid spine. And you and you even have a tailbone. So you're closer to a human than an owl, despite what your hoodie led me to believe. So, you believe me? When did I say that? You could just be wearing an owl hoodie, but I should be a monkey girl or something. Ah, but she doesn't really smell like any other kitten we met. She's definitely not an insect kitten, but... He doesn't smell like a normal mammal can eat on, either. I'd say it's still possible she's a human. But she still doesn't have a weapon. If Blue transformed and fused onto her person, then she could, couldn't possibly have lost a weapon. Uh, what? Hold up. Tell me this god is fused to me somehow? Oh, wait. Before I came to this earth, I wasn't wearing this blue hoodie or these boots. Is this the, the god? Well, I guess the color scheme makes sense, but you were able to lift and remove your hoodie just to show us your back. So that can't be the weapon. So the weapon can't be removed. Is it like a tattoo? How am I supposed to use it? Is it that band on your arm? Hold on, hold on. I think I have one of the legendary Legends of Colors books in here somewhere. I don't remember the legends exactly, but because we haven't read them since we were little, but I think the weapon is a piece of clothing that can only be removed by a human. Is that a storybook? Yep, it's the closest we have to the origin story of our land. Now let's see here. Risa flips open a small pamphlet of letters in her hands and tell lays the paper on the table so everyone read it. Once there were three gods, they were named Red, Blue, and Yellow. In order to maintain balanced power between the three, they each agreed to partner with a single human and bestow upon that human a gift of their abilities. Red bestowed the power of magic and illusions to its human to evade defenses. Blue bestowed the power of strength and weaponry to its human to cut through illusions. And Yellow bestowed the power of defense and shields to its human to protect from others from attacks. 
These gifts could only be seen, used by humans and could not be utilized by or seized by any citizen born in color. Without the vessels of a human, the gods cannot sustain themselves at full power as they had devoted much of their lifespan and energy to crafting color. Thus Red the Hawk sought out a human from Earth that could amplify their power and help maintain color. Fifteen years ago, Blue the Owl and Red the Hawk battled over who would have control over the planet. Yellow the Pelican remained neutral and fell into a deep slumber to avoid conflict. It has not been seen since. Red the Hawk easily defeated Blue the Owl since Red the Hawk was partnered with Queen, our sorceress. Although Blue the Owl had perished, we, the surviving people of colors, will remain strong and support our mistress. Together, we can rebuild our planet. Long live the queen. The three stand around the pages, rereading them over and over. Silently, after a few minutes, Risa turn, turns, turns to Iris and whispers quietly. I drew all the pictures, by the way. Oh, I did notice they were hand-drawn. They were, how do I put this? Really nice. But as nice as the drawings were, are, I have no idea what Blue's gift is still. Like, Risa, what is this thing with the sword sticking out at the end? A river? I'm not really sure, but we copied these pictures out of the official storybook at school. Mr. Ladybug never explained what each of the gifts were. I just know it looks sort of like that. Then this didn't really tell us anything new. Looks like this book didn't help really help after all. I guess I shouldn't have expected so much from a children's storybook. Actually, I think there is something we can figure out from here. Hmm? Which part? This part. About the gifts given to each human. Red bestowed the power of magic and illusions to his human to avoid evade defenses. Blue bestowed the power of strength and weaponry to his human to cut through illusions. Does this mean your power can defeat the ma her majesties? Hold up, this book didn't even specify how gifts of weaponry or whatever can be used. How is this important at all? Ah, never mind then. It was the only thing I had noticed. Ugh, I just want to go back to Earth. I don't want to be trapped here for 14 years. That's it? You just want to go back? I was born when your majesty first arrived here. So the portal between Earth and color was already closed. Big Brother, do you remember when people could travel between the worlds? Well, sort of. I was very young, though. I think most people went to the primary capital. The gods of color have a place at the center of the primary capital. That supposedly had a portal between Earth and color. Do you think it's still open? What? You want to go there? But that's where Her Majesty lives right now. So, I want to go home, and she's human like me, right? Why wouldn't she let me pass? Well, the whole world thinks Blue is dead. It'd be crazy if you just showed up out of nowhere. Is that a good or a bad thing? Is Blue a bad god or something? Er, uh, I think I'm going to start preparing dinner. Risa, do you mind watching over Iris? Yeah, sure, big bro. So, Iris, is there anything you want to know right now? Save? Oh. What is the sorceress like? Her Majesty the Sorceress, she's about 16 in age. 16 as in... I need to save. 16 as in, like, 1-6? I thought she came here 14 years ago. Does that mean she's been around since she was 2? Well, it wasn't really mentioned in the lore books, but she apparently hasn't aged much. It's probably because she partnered up with the God of Color. So I'm going to remain around the same age no matter how long I stay here? If you're both human, then yeah. But as I was saying, she's about 16 and an overall really good leader. Wait, really? You like her? I sure do. I don't know anyone who doesn't love Her Majesty. All of her reforms have been beneficial to our communities. I don't know what we would do without our mail system today. Why do you ask? 
Well, maybe this only happens on Earth, but most new leaders that take over completely are tyrants, or they're hated by everyone, or both. If so many people like Her Majesty, then I guess maybe she's not so bad. We couldn't possibly hate her. Even if we did, we would probably be killed immediately for treasonous thoughts. Er, never mind what I just said. What kind of insect can are you? I'm a moth insect can. Can't you tell by my wings? No, well, I never study, really study insects or anything back on Earth. So I just wouldn't have known. Do you think, still think, still have insects here? Like non insect can, just bugs? Sure we do. Before, before Her Majesty came, everyone was a human too. But then she made us all a different kin to make us improve our lives. That sounds scary. So you just woke up and had wings? Did you get to choose? Nope. No one gets to choose, but I love being a moth. I get to fly around and live with Rius. Well, at least you're enjoying yourself, I guess. Why did the sorcerers change everyone from humans into half animals? Is this some kind of weird fetish? I feel like there's something more going on. What's for dinner? I have no idea. Riss always makes really good food though, so I'm sure it's delicious. I see, I'm almost a little jealous. Huh, really? Do you have a big brother too? Well, no, I have a little brother. His name is Damien. Actually, he's 14 too. So we're the same age. I wish I could meet him someday. There's hardly anyone here around that's my age. I made some potato soup. Ah, oh, that's my favorite soup. Huh, I've never had potato soup before. It's the best. If you don't finish, I'll eat the rest of yours. Sounds like a deal. It looks like they've just finished their soup after half an hour. They're the slowest eaters I've ever met. Wasn't it just the best? I'll be honest, I don't think I'm full. I practically swallowed the whole bowl in one gulp. I guess they don't eat as much. Was it all dry to your stomach at least? Er, I think so. Why? It didn't taste especially different than what I would have expected from Earth's food. Oh good. I wasn't sure if you ate worms with your current soups on Earth too. And I take that back. I feel a little sick. Ah, I'll get you some medicine. Strong stomach medicine. Don't throw up all over the walls. Rivis scurries over into the corner of the hut, leaning over a large basin with water in it. When you say it like that, I almost have the urge to barf. I wonder if your barf is the same color as our bar barf. Lisa. Yeah, do you need help, big brother? Could you pass me some Turio berries from the top of the cabinet? You got it. Risa jumps off the floor and hovers in the air to reach a far up rafter, reaching into a small compartment <laughs> filled with berries. Wow, that's pretty handy. Right? I don't know how other can get around without flying. Risa darts with the same dark colored bat with some dark colored berries and hovers to the corner of the hut where Rhea st is stooped over. Here you go, bro! Thanks, Risa. This kind of reminds me when I had... when I hand you to the mail. I pick up from the capital, actually. Oh yeah, I guess it's not all that different. <laughs> Don't worry, Isis. My brother Rhea is, is both a super fast mail bug and a talented potion, potion maker. Mail bug, huh? That's right. Risa mentioned they had a mail system. I guess they still use letters as correspondence. Chris, can I make make potions like magical potions? Kind of. Most of it is using herbs and berries together to make some juices, though. Oh, and sometimes blood. Blood? Whose blood? No one's blood. Risa, don't scare Iris. Hey, <laughs> just kidding. We don't use blood, that's gross. That's the one who ate corn with worms mashed into soup for dinner. So these potions are medicinal mostly, right? Sure are. Riss wanted to be a medic before he was enlisted to become a mail bug. Let me guess, did the sorceress randomly assign this mail bug job to him? To him? Whoa, 
that was a good guess. You're right, Her Majesty used her magic to seek out the fastest people of every town and assign them that person to become a messenger. But what if they don't want to become a manager? Grease pauses over the small bowl of mashed berries for half a second and resumes pounding the berries with a small pestle. Well, why wouldn't you want to do what Her Majesty told you? It's an honor to receive such a direct order from the sorceress. You were chosen on top of that. You can't walk away from that kind of responsibility, can you? I guess not. Seems like most people here just have accepted the sorceress rule without question. And are they that accommodating? Or did she use her, some of her illusionary magic stuff? Lisa, do you mind cleaning the dishes tonight? I'll get right to it, big brother. And for you, Iris, this is a potion that should help with your stomach ache. Reese passes Iris a small vial of blue liquid. It is curiously the same color as Iris's hoodie and smells rather pungent despite its small quantity. Oh, that. Oh, this has quite a smell. Yeah, that's normal. Sorry about that. You can hold your nose when you drink it, so it won't taste as bad. Iris looks down at the small blue pool of liquid and quickly swallows it in a few gulps without pinching her nose. Ugh, this tastes horrible. I feel like I'm going to. Wait, actually, my stomach feels better. Ooh, so it does work on humans. Yeah, this is a potion that's meant to settle the stomach. Iris hands the empty flask back to rest, swiping her chin and her fur on. But that was really fast. All you used with berries, no magic? Well, maybe our berries have different properties from the berries on Earth. I wouldn't be surprised given your access to magic. Huh. Yeah, we don't have any berries on Earth that would glow such a bright bluish color. I wish Damien was here. I hope he's alright. What happened to you anyways? You were babbling earlier about falling out of a window, right? You were- You very clearly fell from the skies, though. I actually thought you were a comet or something. Er, it's a bit complicated, but basically I stole some food from a supermarket. What were you stealing for? I needed to eat, and we were running short on money. The guy who was running the supermarket got a little angry with me when he found out, and... Probably not such a great reason. I deserved to be shoved out that window. I should have just gotten arrested. There's no way I'm a human chosen by some god. I'm as much of a criminal as Cocoa. Now that I think about it, Cocoa either had the smarts to remain quiet when I was being held up or didn't hear me call out at all. So when you fell out to the window, you closed your eyes and somehow ended up here. I'm still really hoping this is a dream because if it's not, then my brother is seriously still in danger. It's so stupid. How can I endanger my brother like this? Uncle's on vacation, my parents are in the hospital, and now I'm here? What is he going to do without me? I just... I just... Iris. What? What is it? I'll escort you to the capital in the morning. Wait, really? You'll take me there? But I thought you were scared of going. I am a bit nervous about asking for permission to enter the primary capital, yes. But as an older sibling... I would also want to make sure your young, my younger sibling was safe. I can make us healing potion and cook us food, and even carry you if you're tired. We could reach the capital in about a week if we heard. A week? That's a long time. Not necessarily. Blue was definitely on the verge of death 15 years ago. I think if Blue had not merged with the human as soon as possible, Blue would have surely perished. But you only just appeared here recently. So you think there's some kind of time discrepancy between our worlds? What if it just took Blue a little longer to reach Earth because it was weak? Anything is possible. But we can't rule out that possibility. That you can still make it in time to save your brother. See, you're right. I should try to be optimistic. Thank you for offering to take me to the capital. Of course. No problem. Oh, I should probably start packing then. You want... You would want to leave tomorrow, right? It's not really safe to travel at night. You have bandits or something in this town? It seems so peaceful, though. 
No, no, nothing like that. It's just that, well, I'm sort of tired from flying. So we should have to... So we would have to walk out to the forest. Was I that heavy? Oh, oh, no, no. It wasn't because of you. I was just on my way back from Platinum City to pick up my mail. I'm the forest mailbug. Ah, oh, yes, Risa mentioned that too. So Risa had a lo really long trip, but managed to carry me here anyway. Impressive. Are there predators down there? More than just predators. They're monsters. What kind of planet is this? Magic and monsters? It's an unfortunate side effect of the sorceress's magic. By tearing animal characteristics from animals, it turned many of them into magical beasts. Out of all of the monsters, the worst one in the forest is the masked one. What's so scary about it? Ah, it's a monster that eats most of our trash right underneath the village. However, it will eat almost anything in front of it. Reese's, Reese's biological parents were the last ones to be fed. Well, her parents died recently? No, about four years ago. I volunteered to take Reese and since they died. They somehow fell into the trash pile and were consumed by the masked one. Reese was the only one to hear the screams. Best not talk about this in front of Teresa. It's really a touchy subject for her. Oh man, that's hardcore. Yeah, I won't say anything. The mass one doesn't sound friendly. We should wait, definitely wait until morning to leave. Dave? Definitely we'll wait till morning. I'm going to go back if that's alright with you. You might need more stomach medicine. Thanks again, Riss. Riss retreats back to his cauldron and starts examining small vials with various colored liquids in them. Risa is still scrubbing on the dinner bowls with a rag in the separate corner of the room. Somehow I feel useless just standing here. Might as well take a look around. Sam and the Raptor Captains. Iris looks up at the drawers in the Raptors that Risa had opened in order to access stored berries. That's a pretty cool idea. It looks like they have tons of berries over there. Hmm? Found one Trurium berry on the floor. Oh cool, it's one of the berries. I wonder what they taste like on their own. Iris pops a small blueberry into her mouth. Hey, it tasted pretty good. Too bad it leaves a foul-smelling aftertaste. What else is there? Examine the cauldron and the potions. Iris walked behind Riss to examine the vials placed on a shelf over a large black cauldron. Wow, that's a colorful, lot of colorful liquids. Iris' hand strays towards one of the vials and prods it curiously. Whoa, whoa, be careful, that's explosive. Well, what the fuck? You have explosives sitting next to medicinal vials on your shelf? Well, I'm the only one who touches them. Risa knows better, just be careful. Well, I kind of wanted to see it blow up. <laughs> Iris moves away from the shelves just in case there's a slow reaction time. What else is there to do? Examine the kitchen. Looks like a pretty normal kitchen to me. There appears to be a small wooden basin with a hole in the center that drops all the way down to the forest below. That seems kind of dangerous. It does? I mean, if anything drops down the hole, it's basically lost, right? Oh, that's true. But it's basically, it's built that way so that all our access water can reach the plants below us. See, so it's actually pretty good for the environment. Exactly! When in doubt, we get rid of things by throwing them into the forest floor anyways. We have tons of monsters that eat trash. Sounds pretty symbiotic. Scary, but symbiotic. Alright, what else can I do? Damn, the outside. Well, it looks like I'm- save. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm done looking around here. Hey guys, is it safe for me to stand outside on the platforms? I want to take a look outside. Oh sure, go ahead. Just don't fall off the edge. Foreshadowing. Of course I won't. I strolled outside in the middle of one of the footbridges, peering down towards the forest floor. We're so far up, I can't even see the bottom from here. It's too dark to see very clearly, too. There are a few fireflies about, gently illuminating the outlines of nearby huts with the gaps between bridges. 
I had to see some things are still the same. I never thought I'd feel comforted to see fireflies. But now that I have a moment to myself, I should really consider what's going on here. I don't understand everything, but from what I've heard, this sorceress girl is really powerful. I wonder if I can really trust these two. Hey, Iris! Oh, hey, Risa. I Risa, you finished washing the dishes? Yeah, do you mind if you I joined you? She's gonna push me off. No, no, go ahead. I've never seen a village like this before. <laughs> thanks! You don't have a village back home? I live in a city, actually, so I've never lived in so close to large trees. That sounds awful. I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm, some things have been bothering me for a while. Are you and Riss really siblings? Are you doubting our relationship? She's snapping. No, no, or at least I didn't mean to. It's just that you guys don't really look alike. Why would I have to look like him for us to be siblings? Well, unless our definition of siblings are different, doesn't that mean you at least share one parent so you would look sort of similar? Oh, so you really don't know. Well, here on Matt Collar, no one has been able to have children since Her Majesty arrived. Whoa, really? So then no one in Collar is younger than 14 years old? Yeah, I'm one of the last children to be born. I was adopted by Rias when my real parents... Uh... That is when they left. That's getting dark. I guess I shouldn't push it. Something terrible must have happened to, to them, judging by the look on her face. I guess we're not really that different. My parents left too. I wonder why this sorceress person didn't allow any other children to be born in this world. It's kind of scary that she has that much control over this planet. Does this mean I can do something like that too? So, uh... Hmm? You want to ask me something else? Color have humans before the sorcerers? That's what it is. Were there humans on color before the sorcerers? Yeah, I guess so. But we weren't strong enough. So the sorceress is not only magically powerful, but physically strong too? Wow. <laughs> no, not like that. I mean, mentally. Our planet was apparently ravaged se severely by some chemical stuff from Earth. That doesn't sound good. Like what? Pollution? I think it was called radiation. Color was highly ravaged by radiation. I don't think Earth gives off that much radiation. Could color have been affected from World War II? Whoa! Yeah, something like that. It made everyone on the planet really weak, even though we were humans. Our god couldn't even fuse with us. So they had to go to Earth to find partners. Ah, so the sorceress gave you all human traits in order to supplement your weaker human side? I have no clue what that means, but she gave us animal traits in order to make our lives better since we were weaker humans. Well, she understood the gist of it. But by turning all the color citizens into half animals, by doing so, doesn't she exempted all the people of color from being able to fuse with the god? Isn't that inconvenient? Huh, I never thought about that before. You're right, but it, that doesn't really matter, right? Maybe it does. How? By getting rid of humans on color, she's basically limiting her competition. She tried to kill Blue, right? And Blue's power is able to cut through illusions, like you said earlier. She's freaking out again. But maybe she was just trying to make sure that Blue couldn't fuse with anyone on color. Maybe she hoped that Blue would... would Guy searching for a human on Earth. I... I don't know. Oh, sorry about that. I was just thinking it was strange, that's all. Ah, yeah, it sort of is. I'm gonna get pushed off this ledge by this girl. Chris said earlier that you were picking him berries, reminding him of something he hands you the mail he picks up from the capital or something, right? Yeah, I volunteered to be a mail delivery bug for our town when Riss was chosen as a mail carrier. What's the difference? Do you guys alternate picking up mail? Nuh uh. Riss always picks up the mail from Platinum City every week. We're a small village, so we don't have a direct mail station. So after Riss brings the envelopes back, I sort them and deliver them to his villagers. 
You volunteered for this job, though. So it wasn't related to the fact that you two are siblings. Yep. I always want to be with Riss. He practically raised me. Even the clothes I wear once were once Riss's. Say what now? Oh, I sell all of her clothes. So I just took some of old Riss's old clothes and made my own out of them. Sundare. It's a Sundare. Not Sundare. Yandare. We're screwed. I won't judge. Oh no, this is the one that gets me pushed. You be okay on your own? By myself, but Riss just got home. He only leaves for a few days to pick up the mail and then stays for the rest of the week. Ah, uh, did Riss not tell you then? He offered to take me to the capital or whatever. The place with the portal. He recommended that we leave in the morning, so we'll leave tomorrow as soon as possible. But, Big, big Brother is leaving. He's leaving me for you. Oh, shit. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, don't think of it like that. He'll come back. I just need someone to show me the way to the capital so I can get home. He'll be back in no time. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, Iris, do you want to know a secret? You push your parents into the monster. Uh, sure. Something seems really off about Risa. You want to know what ha really happened to my parents four years ago? Risa steps closer to Iris, rocking the unsteady footbridge. Hey, be careful, I could fall off. I can't fly like you. Neither could my parents when I ripped off their wings and threw them off over over a bridge! Ah! This bitch has got me! Let go! Don't let go! <laughs> Risa grabs a hold of Iris' hoodie and suddenly jumps off the bridge, dragging Iris into the air. Risa, stop! I don't understand! Neither did my parents. They told me apart from being with Rias. But they learned their lesson. <laughs> now you will too! Risa, no! Risa released her grip on Iris' hoodie and alighted daintily back on the footbridge as Iris plummeted into the dark forest floor below. This bitch. Risa! I don't care if you're a human fused with God. Nobody, nobody will come in between me and Rius again. Risa watches as a small, bright speck of blue vanished into the darkness, giggling lightly to herself. Whoa, whoa. Risa, is everything okay out there? Yeah, Iris and I are going for a walk around the village real quick. So we'll be back later. Okay, don't stay out too late. Yeah, I know. We'll be very careful. <laughs> oh, God. You are always falling. There's that voice from my dream again. Who are you? There is no time to explain. Pull the ribbon. Ah! Oh. Huh? Iris looked around wildly, slowly sitting up and got gouging, gauging her surroundings. She apparently landed on a hard lilac colored sparse patch of grass. Up above, Iris can vaguely see the outline of some of the huts. She... Fuck. Risa actually just tried to kill me. Iris quickly examines her clothes and body, moving all of her limbs and searching for bruises. But it looks like I'm unharmed. That's a really solid fall though. There's no way I could have survived. And again, this is the second time I've survived a fall I thought would kill me. Maybe, did Blue save me? Iris tugs cautiously on the hem of her blue hoodie, trying to elicit some response from it. The hoodie remains silent and lifeless. One step at a time though, I can't stay down here. Rhea said mo there were monsters or some shit down here. What was the, dream from, the voice from my dream telling me? I don't remember. Iris attempts to climb up a nearby tree, but can't find a solid grip. The bark is extremely smooth and shiny. Shit. Shit. Reese wasn't kidding. I don't think there's a way up except to fly. This is absolutely the worst day of my life. Reese! Reese! 
Iris shouted as loudly as she could, but all that answered her was the rustling of leaves and dead foliage underfoot. Silence is a little unsettling. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to go around screaming in a foreign forest with monsters lurking all about. Maybe Rias was will realize I've gone missing and come back for me. That little bitch, Risa, might come up with a lie to cover up my disappearance, so shit. Iris freezes as something slowly approaches from deeper within the forest. Oh, hail. The creature is at least six foot tall, six feet tall, and ambles on four jet black hoof legs. Iris breathing quickens as it slowly trots towards her. The creature barely makes a sound as it moves across the grass. Save? Save. <laughs> Oh man, is this one of the monsters Rius was talking about? It stops right in front of Iris. It's silver fur glistening in the moonlight. It reaches down what Iris presumes to be its head towards Iris's face, studying her for a moment. <laughs> Hi there, buddy. The monster stares back at Iris, silently looming in front of her. Maybe it can't see me if I stay still. What should I do? Stay still and hope it goes away. I think I'll just stay quiet and try not to move. Iris stays absolutely still, even holding her breath so that the sound will not portray her position. The monster pauses at Iris at Isis, breathing stops, and then the monster makes a low guttural sound and leans away from Iris, rearing its long neck towards the sky. Nani? Huh? Oh hell, run! Run! Holy shit! Iris immediately turns her on her heels and runs away from the beast. Good idea. I'm out of here! The beast lets out a loud roar and chases after Iris as soon as she starts running. As Iris runs blindly through the forest, she can hear the monster behind her trampling across the forest floor. Iris sneaks a glance over her shoulder but can't see the creature anymore. Where is it? I still hear something chasing after me, so there's no way it left. Iris freezes and hides amongst some side bushes as the monster rushes along to trot and path. That thing is terrifying. I can't hear I can't hear it because it's floating above the ground. I guess those little stubs were actually wings. Okay, okay, I have to stay calm. I can can't freak out. We just said there were monsters down here, and that thing definitely didn't look friendly. Maybe that was the mask one that Rias was talking about. I hope not. I can can't climb up the trees towards the village. I guess my only option is to camp out here. There doesn't even have enough cover for me to hide around. Keep a lookout for a source of water too. But then what? If I survive tonight, I still have no idea how to get to the capital. Man, I'm just royally fucked. Oh shit, it's coming back! Oh hell no, son! Alright, that should be enough food for medicine for two weeks. I hope she's okay with berry and soups for a while. I have some stomach egg medicine for her just in case too. Lisa and Iris have been gone for a while. Big brother, I'm back. Oh good, you're back. Where's Iris? Huh? She didn't come back already? She said she was going to walk back while I sorted the letters at the post office. What? Maybe she's lost then. I'll go look for her. No! Mr. Screen startles the tall redhead and he steps backwards, bumping into the dinner table. Oh, Lisa, what's wrong? Why do you care so much about helping deck out this girl anyways? All we have to do is tell her, Majesty, that we found a prospective human with blue, right? Isn't that what you want? Then you can make potions and stay at home with me all the time. Her Majesty would be so pleased with us. You might even get relieved of your messaging duty. You report Iris. Risa, you don't remember what it was like before the sorceress was here. You don't realize what she's done to color to us. So what if she's changed a few things? I think you have a reason way more convenient. You're willingly committing treason. You're betraying the queen. Her Majesty finds out that we help Blue. Miss, I can't, I can't lose you. You're the most important person in the world to me. 
Small mouth moth girl's wings fluttered as she bows her bowed her head, tears streaming down her cheeks. Risa, I know you're concerned, but I I can't just leave Iris alone. Where is she? Are you choosing her over me? So you and you just met over your sister? After everything I've done for you, I sold your stupid clothes, killed my parents, and even volunteered to be a stupid mail sorter just for the work for you. What? Your parents? You killed your parents? Of course I did! They wouldn't let me live with you because I was too young. They had to be eliminated, just like Iris. Lisa, what have you done? What I had to do! I'm going out to look for her. Rhea's brushing past his younger sister and leaps out the closet railing, flying down to the forest floor below. You're leaving me that I have no choice! You'll regret this, Rhea's! Iris rests for a moment at the top of the small hill, overlooking a lake in the middle of the forest. Oh man, I should have exercised more when they let me out of the ER. At least this means I've found water. I can't tell if it's clean or not though. It might have aquatic monsters in it too. Ours cringes as she hears the monsters growl from not too far away. Are you kidding me? This thing's still following me? Sis, Isis. Why does her name keep changing? Hmm? Iris rolls around to face the sound or source of the sound, noticing Rias at the other edge of the pond. Rias? Rias, Rias, I'm over here! Iris's voice echoes across the pond, and she immediately regrets shouting when she recognizes that she had officially betrayed her position. I am a dumbass. <laughs> Save. Rhys quickly flutters over the water, Alec lighting beside Iris hurriedly. He, his knuckles are white as he clutches the strap of his bag. Iris, are you all right? Without saying a word, Iris immediately punches the dragonfly boy square in the stomach. Urg. Are you trying to kill me too because I'm honestly not in the mood? And I only called you over here to use your corpse to distract the monster. What? I know you're mad, and I'll take that punch, but as you said, this is not the time. You'll have to wield the weapon. If you are human, this is the chance to prove it. Why? I just want to go home. Mass one sounds very close by. E even if I wanted to, I don't know how to use this weapon thing. I can buy you some time. Wh what are you doing? Rius plants himself between Iris and the oncoming beast, his thin frame shaking as he stands his ground between the against the beast. Oh, hell no. <laughs> the bass one leaps out from behind the bushes, roaring threateningly at Rius. On the single off chance possibility, you are human. Chosen by Blue, I absolutely cannot let you die here. Right! Rias charges forward at the mass one, screaming loudly as if to startle it. That did not work. Ah, ah, the monster easily brushes Rias aside with a single swing of its head, knocking the dragonfly into a tree trunk. Oh god, oh god! The monster is slowly floating towards ours. I'm not... I'm not going to... I'm not going to die here, damn it! I can't lose! So you finally hear me. I have awakened in response to your resolve to survive. Chosen human, I grant you the power of miracles. This is the great power of strength and destruction, but also protection. How you choose the power is your choice. I just can feel that the bat in her hand is pulsating. It's clearly no ordinary weapon. Baseball bat, huh? Feels pretty light. Not bad. As Iris speaks, two nearby trees suddenly crumple and collapse on the lake nearby. Could this have been the result of Iris wielding the bat in her hand? The monster in front of Iris has retracted his mask back over his mouth, uneasily staring at her down at her. Iris glances over at Rias, re readying the bat behind her to swim. Rias' body is immobile and a few feet away. 
power, strength, construction, and protection, huh? What should I do with this? I'm killing it. I feel like if I kill it, though, it might kill Rias. I'm gonna kill it. Power swings the bat towards her shoulder, aiming for the monster's head. It will only take a second, buddy. Mass one rears up suddenly on his hind legs, clearly startled by the action. This Pongo Jumbo shit better work! Mass one is cleanly beheaded, the monster crumpling to the ground. Although the death was surprisingly bloodless, Iris cannot help but stare at the corpse and awe. Whoa, its whole head came off, but the bat was blunt, wasn't it? I guess this thing is more powerful than I thought, hmm? When Iris looked down at her hand, right hand, the baseball bat had vanished. It's gone already? Maybe I can only use it for one, once per swing. Before Iris can contemplate more on the matter, Rius lets out a groan nearby. Oh shit, that's right, Rius! The safety of Iris' companion had completely slipped her mind. Uh, uh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Just a little winded. Whip discontinued. What? What do you mean, whip discontinued? <laughs> what does whip mean? I like that game. That was cool. That was like a really good fantasy world. That was dope. I really enjoyed that. That was the kind of a. I'm starting to lose my voice and stuff because doing voices in the long read is kind of hard. But I did really enjoy that. And, uh, yeah, if you want to vote for this game, look at the top right. There should be a poll and click it. And whichever game wins by the end of the poll, which will be the 29th, I will, uh, donate that five bucks to. But I did enjoy this game. It was a lot of fun. I'd like to see the ending, but seems like it's been discontinued. But thanks for watching as always, guys. If you would, please like and subscribe. I truly appreciate it. Bye!